I'm here with Professor Robert Elwood. Um, if you'd like to start by telling us obviously your recent researchers and uh, focus on investigating pain and stress in invertebrates. So what's motivated you to, to focus on invertebrates in particular? For some time now I've been working on crustacea with respect to motivation, aggression, and I'm interested in aggression and how animals gather information and use that to settle conflicts. And it was some time about six, seven years ago that I was in my local pub restaurant and I noticed a famous seafood chef uh, was, was, was in the restaurant while waiting for his meal. And so I went and spoke to him and said uh, that I was interested in crustacean behaviour. So I said, I watch their behaviour. You cook them. Mm -hmm. And he simply looked, looked at me and said, do they feel pain? So I considered the possibility and uh, by that time his meal was ready and my meal was ready, mm -hmm. so we went our separate ways. And this niggled at me for a while afterwards, to saying, well, how on earth could you possibly test that? Um, I had no ideas how you could test it. Mm -hmm. And um, I sort of resolved in my drives backwards and forwards from work thereafter, the, the following weeks, that I would try to think of ways to test it. And that's, that's what we've been doing. Great, thank you very much. You've noted in, in past papers and uh, speaking that you feel that there's a general perception um, that people don't want to accept that invertebrates feel pain or show pain. Why do you think that is? Well, I think there's a reluctance to accept it because people feel that invertebrates are quite alien. You know, they have some empathy towards dogs and cats, with which are familiar um, with the apes and, and mammals uh, in general. Some might feel empathy towards birds. But when it gets to insects, crustacea. These are strange alien creatures and people don't regard them as, as having any of the uh, abilities that, that mammals have and so uh, they, they, they never conceive of, of, of the idea that they could experience pain and indeed I, I would put myself in that category because I was working on them from, from an upper behavior point of view and, and uh, I was not worrying at night whether these animals experience pain. I, I was concerned with what information can they get and how do they uh, deal with that information. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. What particularly about the uh, crustacean brain do you think could indicate that they can show pain? Well, there, there was um, an influential study that suggested that uh, unless animals had structures very similar to the human brain which have been implicated in pain experience, uh, that the animal would not be able to experience pain. Now, that paper was pointing mostly at things like fish or reptiles, saying these animals couldn't possibly experience pain because they don't have these critical mammalian structures. And uh, I think that's a completely false argument with respect to crustacea, which of course on that argument they will be rejected as experiencing pain. Because, just to draw the analogy, mammals have a visual cortex and that enables them to perceive light and, and features of the environment. Uh, crustacea do not have a visual cortex, like the mammalian cortex, but nevertheless they can see. So you can have similarity of function, but with different structures. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So if you could um, tell us a little bit about the sort of research that you do with these crustaceans. I've used three approaches. Uh, the main aim being to try to separate or to ask are these animals acting simply by a nociceptive reflex or are, are there signs of some non-reflex behavior which would show some central processing which is what happens in mammalian pain there is a central processing and i've used three approaches on that first of all uh, one could ask about learning will they learn to avoid emotional stimulus and the evidence is good yes they will they do it quite quickly and they have a prolonged memory. Uh, the other one is, do they have motiv motivational trade-offs? Mm -hmm. That is, um, does, does the motivation to avoid pain compete with motivation to access other resources? And there I've used hermit crabs, where they will, if you give them an electric shock within the shell, uh, how quickly they jump out of that shell depends on how good the shell is for them, if it's their favorite species. They, they resist jumping out more, so they're trading off. That, that's clearly not a reflex. So that, that, that's, that's two approaches. And the third is 
prolonged grooming, we call these prolonged protective responses. And we did this with uh, glass prawns which have very long antennae. And if you put a noxious substance on them, like acetic, acetic acid, they will groom specifically in the back antenna and not the other antenna. So they know where the object is. It's, it's prolonged, it's a complex behaviour, it's clearly not a reflex. And if you treat them with a local anaesthetic, they don't show that behaviour and it is reduced by local anaesthetic, which is, again is another expectation of pain. So these three routes are all consistent with the idea of pain. I think it is important to say they don't prove pain, uh, but they are clearly consistent and open up the possibility. But the critical thing is that the experiments, those approaches, had the opportunity, the potential of them, for negative results to come out. But there, were, there might have been no evidence to support pain. But all those evidence are consistent. There is evidence to support pain. But proving what is going on in the animal's mind is, of course, very, very difficult. Great, thank you. What implications do you think your, your findings have for animal welfare? Uh, two. Two parts. Um, firstly, in understanding pain, what do we mean by pain? Is it prolonged change in motivation, or is it something different? Uh, the second one is specific to crustacea. If there is an acceptance that crustacea are likely to experience pain, then some changes in, in the way they're handled would have an enormous effect on welfare, because crustacea are used in the human food industry in absolutely vast, vast numbers compared to the use of vertebrates. I mean, tens of times more. Absolutely, thank you. And uh, just lastly, where do you think the science of animal sentience is going, particularly in relation to crustaceans? I think we're finding out more and more what these animals are capable of. I mean, from my other work, which was on uh, aggression, looking at what information they could use, and, and, and that is quite complex, particularly hermit crabs have an ability to gather information that I would have never have thought was possible. So they are complex animals. They are cognitively more competent than I think one would have expected. And so this is opening up the, the possibility that, that they are sentient animals. They can perceive things. They have strong motivations to avoid noxious stimuli. Uh, and I think it just broadens the whole view rather than focusing on one what is rather small animal, animal group of mammals. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, it's certainly very interesting work and uh, very inspirational, so I'm sure our uh, users of the sentience mosaic can find this very interesting, and they'll also be able to find all of your work and, of course, all of the, uh, the scientific databases as well and be able to read up about, about more if they wish. So thank you very much for your time today. It's been really, really interesting. Thank you That's very great. much. Thank you, man. Cheers.